Welcome to that pedal show, Mick here, hello. I said I was gonna follow up on the Binson Ecorec video that Dan and I shot just recently, the T-Rex Binson Ecorec. Uh, we did a video on it, comparing it to all kinds of things like the Strymon Volante, the Dorna Prince Bunar, and some other stuff. Um, and one of the issues I raised is that I thought it was a bit noisy. So we found that it, it's gained up quite a bit. Uh, and as a result, some of that noise floor is quite high. And I mentioned in the video, wouldn't it be great to hear it on its balanced XLR ins and outs used as outboard gear in a studio environment? Yeah, it's gained up and even in bypass. It's, you know, it's, yeah. it's not a true bypass thing. It's, um, it's So for me, with that leveled out a little bit, yeah, and magic. I want to hear the noise floor with the XLRs. Sure. Because that, if it's that much noise floor on XLR in recording, that's too noisy right? for me. Okay. I think once it's mixed in on the on the track, mm. I mean, I don't know. I Yeah, well, there's plenty of space echoes that are that noisy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, including yours. Absolutely. I've since learned that internally there is a gain trimmer, apparently. It doesn't say it in the manual, and it certainly doesn't advise that you do it because you have to take it to bits. Maybe it's aimed at studio people. Also, apparently there's a mod you can do internally to make it kill dry, but these aren't kind of user serviceable things. They're not, they're not mentioned in the manual and it's not kind of something that I would want to get into. In any case, I thought let's stick it on some XLRs. Let's use it in two different ways uh, in a studio environment um, as an insert effect. So uh, just to explain that briefly, we go source, microphone, mic preamp, and within the mic preamp sits the insert effect. And then secondly, on a bus. So if you're using a mixing desk or a door with a mixer in it, you can send out from the door or the mixer into the effects device, back into the door or the mixer, and use it as a parallel effect. We'll talk all about all of that as we get going. I'm gonna do those two things in the video. You'll notice there's some drums here. No apologies, I'm playing drums. Um, I'm the best person I could get <laughs> in the time frame for the budget I had, which was zero and zero. Um, yeah, JFDI, isn't it? We're, we're on a voyage of discovery of learning, so I'm, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna play the drums and the bass, but a basic track down, explain what's going on, and uh, we'll come to some conclusions. To explain what's happening, the drum kit is simply mic'd. There are two overheads, Austrian Audio OCC8s, I think they're called. Uh, these things, like them very much. Um, there's a mic in the kick, an AKG D112, the standard kick drum mic. And on the snare, there's a Bayer something or other. Close mic in the snare and hats is a Bayer M201TG. There is a mic on the floor tom, but I'm a novice drummer and I'm not quite ready to use that one yet. So there's no floor tom, <laughs> even though there's a mic in it. There's no EQ, no compression, no nothing. It's just the sound of the mics, as I'll explain as we get going. I do the drums first, I do the bass next, do the guitar last, then I'll explain what happens. Let's get into it. Okay, guitars, uh, just a quick explanation. There's two ways you could use something like the Echo Rec as outboard, right? One is you use it in line with your signal as normal. So this isn't really any different than having it in your effects loop, only that it's after the speaker, not after uh, the preamp. So we're, we're miking the guitar amp. There's two mics on the guitar amp. I'm sending those two signals into these two mic preamps here. These are two, this is a Neve 1073 DPX. Yes, it's new and yes, I love it. <laughs> uh, it's got two identical channels and I've set up two identical mics on the cab. On the first channel here, we're running the Echo Rec as what we would call an insert effect, right? So it hits there, comes out into here, goes back into there and then comes out of there. On the other channel, it's not there. So we can record a bit of guitar and hear what happens when we add the echo rec. Okay, I've armed the two tracks. It's now recording 
there's no signal passing, nothing's turned on. The only thing that's happening is the mic's alive, the guitar amp mic's alive. They're coming into the Neve, one is going out to here. I'm not detecting, not detecting any big noise. Let's just turn it on and off a sec. Remember, it's in the signal chain. So let's play a bit of guitar and see if it's working. I've got my strap through the clon into the two hook, of course, because why not? Because why not? Uh, right. Oh, hang on, I've got to turn the amp on. You will hear some noise from my strap because it's single coils. And I have to get a position where they're not too noisy, which is about here. sweet so that's working we're getting uh, signal in to both channels I'll have said on screen what you were listening to as you were listening to them so now I'll just do the take I guess of the uh, of the piece and I'll record it exactly as we've got here so just two guitar uh, well one guitar part recorded down two mics into two channels one of which will have this as an insert and I'll put on screen what you're listening to when you when you hear it uh, just listen back to it. One of the challenges when doing this is, of course, you can't really... I'm sat in the same room, so the guitar amp's quite loud. I can't really hear it very loud through these cans. So um, what what I was hearing was the, uh, the uh, echo was very distorted. So I'm going to turn the record level down and see if we can get a cleaner repeat. Let's see. <laughs> Have a quick listen to that. It could be that the send level from the Neves is just too high and it's, it's distorting it. But um, I've got the record level down at about, well, I don't know, somewhere between eight and nine o'clock and the echo volume round at uh, three o'clock. So I'll have a quick listen back to that. Yeah, so my, I think probably the output from the, from that is too hot and it's making this overdrive in the repeats a little bit because um, I've got the record level down. It's it's overdriving a bit, which have to get to the bottom of that. That might have something to do with that fairly high input level. Um, I've adjusted the heads on the back to be quite loud output, but I don't think that, I think they are output levels, not input levels to the head, aren't they? Yeah, it's playback level. I don't, I'm going to check the manual. I'm going to check the manual. Yeah, just check the manual. I doubt I put the manual on my phone and, um, in the bit where it's talking about the head volume, there's adjusters on the back for the heads, which I've adjusted back to the factory spec. I'd cranked them up to get more volume out of it, but maybe that was over that saturating too much. It does say if you hear saturation in the repeats, you need to turn down the input signal to the unit. That's an interesting place to be because then if you turn down the input, you need to be able to get enough output. Let's see where we are now.
Sorry about the squeaky chair. All right. Um, I'm gonna just going to record it, and then uh, we'll get on to the other use. I think it's quieter. Um, eventually got that down I had to do a few takes. <laughs> um, qualified success because I think if you're using outboard in this way, you'd want an engineer listening in a control room to really hear what's going on because I'm really struggling to get the balance of wet and dry signal. So just putting it in line like this could work. Great, happy days. And we've done it that way and you can hear the difference. Let's move on to using it as outboard uh, proper and see what happens there. We're going to put it on the drums. Here's where it gets really fun. So now we're going to use it as a parallel bus effect. This is a technique used, well, forever in studios where you have all your inputs coming in, you then send out to a, another device. Could be a compressor, could be an EQ, could be an effect machine, could be, I don't know, noise suppression, all those boxes you see in fancy studios. And then you bring it back in again. Now, what you would normally do on a bus uh, F type effect, a parallel effect, is you would have it kill dry, so it would be wet only because your dry effect is the one that you've recorded, your dry signal is the one you've recorded, and the wet would be on the bus. That's not possible in the Ecorec without uh, an internal mod, which you can do, but it's not mentioned in the manual, and I certainly don't want to take it to pieces to do it. So let's see how far we get um, with all of this. Might get some phasing issues, who knows. Um, in order to do that, just to explain it very briefly, our audio is already recorded. Uh, you've seen me recording it. We use the Universal Audio Apollo uh, rack mount interfaces, which are absolutely brilliant for this. So they have alternative outputs. So we can, in addition to your monitor outputs, for example, you can then assign three other pairs of outputs, I think, to do other things. And I've got one of them set up here, or one mono output set up to go into the echo rack. You then come back into your audio interface, into a line input, and in Logic's case anyway, and props to Logic for doing this, um, you use a plugin called IO. It's one of the utility plugins, and it enables you to say where it's going to go from and come back to and able, enable that effect to be on your bus, which is what we've got. So without further ado, let's listen. Um, I, you can't see the screen close up. I'm going to have to do my best to tell you what's going on. So we've got it all hooked up. I have checked that it's working because it did take me about half an hour to check that it's working. Um, <laughs> just to make sure all the cables are going to the right places. I'll just play, I'll play the drums uh, and the bass. In fact, let's take the bass out and just play the drums from the top and I'll explain what's going on as I do that. There are drums, okay, all good. Um, I'm just going to solo the kick and the snare. These are just the mics on the kick and the snare. There's no EQ, there's no compression, there's nothing. This is purely unprocessed as it was recorded, right? So if you don't like the sound, well, that's up to you. <laughs> I've sent both the kick and the snare to this external bus on which is the Echorec, right? So I'm going to turn that bus on right now. <laughs> Sounds like dub or reggae or something. So we'll go for a single single repeat. This is just head four. Quite like that. That'll do. And let's try a shorter head as well to see if we, in fact, let's turn the swell on. Yeah, man. It really does sound dubby now. Um, without it. Just gonna try and flip the phase on that a sec. Oh, there we go. Right. 
That's pretty annoying. So somewhere in the send and return, it's flipped the phase. So I just flipped the phase back in the return channel and now we're in phase, happy days. Okay, as cool as that is, I don't really want dub on my track, not on this track anyway. Heads three and four, too much. Head one and four. It's pretty cool. And remember, it's only on the close mics, it's not on the room mics. I'm gonna add some reverb to that in a minute. Um, Man. That's with the echo rec off. And with it on. That's cool. So what we could do now is turn the volume down and turn the record level right up to see if we can get it overdriving. Turn the shaker down as well a bit. Another way to do that would be to really push these bus sends, right? So you won't be able to see it, but I've got a, I've got a way in which I can affect the level that I'm sending to the Echorec, and I'm just going to really slam that now. a bit so I'll just turn this down a bit just turn that aux down a bit loving it so let's just hear it actually on the track with the guitar okay and the bass So because we recorded two guitars, I'm going to stick the affected one over to the left and put the unaffected one on the right, okay? Affected one's gone off left, if I've got my pans the right way around. <laughs> and here's going to come in the other one. I've also corrected the phase on the other guitar because it's, this flips it annoyingly. So, I'm absolutely loving that. Uh, sorry, squeaky chair. You could use a plugin, right? It's probably people screaming at the screen. Why aren't you using a plugin? It's just so much simpler. Well, you can have that argument amongst yourselves. I'm going to make it even more complex and add the CXM78 reverb on another bus and see if it's possible to have two instances of the IO plugin. I don't know if it is. Never done this before. Whoa, we're in the woods now. So we'll bring up Logic's, sorry for all the clacking on the table, it's not ideal. We'll um, choose a new bus send, we'll put this on bus two. So bus two comes up, we'll just send, um, I don't know if you can see that, I've selected a bus and I've sent minus two dB uh, off of five sources. In bus two, I'm gonna change it to a stereo bus and I'm gonna select the IO plugin, please work. Well, looks like it might. Uh, these are outputs maybe 5 and 6 and inputs 37, 38 because that's how I've got it rooted. We will ping that. So no, maybe it's outputs 3 and 4. Hmm, okay, that's not good. Should totally be working. Oh, ho, 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 that was nice. Sorted, it was just, I was using the wrong pair of outputs and I think I had my outputs three and four to mirror my monitor outputs, not as separate sends. So it was causing a, a big problem. Now I'm pretty sure we ping this. <laughs> There's reverb happening. So if we play the drums, I've, I have high hopes. <laughs> mm. 
No reverb. Oh man. So the preset I want to use is the room preset, which I've got in mind as number one. Try on this one. Okay, that's with the CXM. No CXM. I'll turn the echo rec on. So killer. We'll add room reverb to that. Strictly speaking, we should make the um, CXM kill dry as well, but I'm not going to, so there. That would be interesting to see if, if this is flip phase as well. Probably not. I'm, just, I'm I'm loving that in ways I, I can't quite explain. Let's try a bit of a bigger reverb. Bigger still. Ah, because there's pre-delay on, right? I'd never realised that. Wow. Whoa. Number one is my favourite, it's the roomy one. So this is just the reverb, right? Just the reverb bus. Put more treble into that. Take the treble out, put more bass in. Mids. Sounds really roomy. Groovy. All right, what I'm going to do then, having been through all of that, is I'll do a little mix on this. So you've seen roughly what's going to happen. You've heard it roughly. I will, I'll do a little mix up. And um, actually, I'm going to send the bass and probably the guitars to the room reverb as well, just to help tie it all in. So if we select uh, the bass, the bass wants some work actually, because that's just a straight DI through a Neve 1073, which I'm quite pleased with, sounds brilliant. Um, yeah. Um, and I need to comp those guitars because I did actually do two takes, like a naughty boy. <laughs> uh, so we'll send that to the reverb and we'll just give that a bit for the guitar and the bass to tie it in. No EQ, no compression, nothing. Drum kit, mics, very, very nice, admittedly, knee front end pre's. Um, and a bit of outboard. Took me a minute. In fact, let's do the conclusion separately. Okay, that's enough knob twiddling for now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right then. Uh, well, that was a whirlwind. I did the drums yesterday. It, yesterday was Sunday, and today is Monday, and I finished off with the guitars today and the little bit of production stuff. Um, wow, this is cool. You'll notice in the track that as in the sort of B section, as it were, you'll hear the repeats start to come up and swell. That's because I manually just turned the knob up as it was bouncing out, like old school mixing. Um, and I have to say the combination of the CXM and the Echo Rec as outboard, yeah, man, <laughs> I could totally live with that. Why not use a plugin? Well, why not use outboard? Um, good, I hope that explains. To answer the actual question of the video, it didn't seem to be noisy at all to me in that environment. There are more questions to ask about that input gain trimmer, all of that in the future as a guitar effect used in line on your board. As outboard, yes, just yes, it's magic. I love the tactile nature of the, of the knobs. I mean, it's all very analog, right? So you can't store any presets or anything. So every time you do a mix, you'd have to remember where they were. But there is something about the nature of, and this is the old school me talking, acoustic instruments, nice microphones, really lovely preamps. Gotta say, we've acquired some Neve stuff just recently, a 4081 1073 DPX and two 1073 Pre's. I'm not reaching for any EQ anywhere. We just place the mics and we get the sound. And that is kind of a link to saying that by doing the same with this, by just twiddling the knobs, by not worrying about a million different options and getting a sound you like there and then, the workflow process, the creativity that it unlocks for me personally is worth everything. That's the first track I have ever recorded myself playing guitar, bass and drums. All right, it's only a short track, probably could do with some more instruments, but all that notwithstanding, that is the first track I have ever recorded. I'm gonna be 50 years old soon, playing drums, bass and guitar, start to finish, and I did it in a few hours because I can twist knobs and the source sound is good. I feel inspired. It's down to this in a big way because it's inspired me to get my hands dirty. So, um, Happy days. I hope the video explains the question and the answer and doesn't tangent too much off into using reverbs and playing drums and things like that. Anyway, uh, happy Tuesday. This goes out on a Tuesday. Please subscribe. Please go to that pedalshowstore.com and we'll see you on Friday for more fun. See you soon.